Hello everyone and welcome back to our study series in Nehemiah. It is wonderful to see you all. Today I want to speak to you about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Many of you may have heard of this theory. Abraham Maslow was the son of a Jewish Russian who had migrated to America. Maslow was born in Brooklyn in 1908 and he grew up during the height of American capitalism. And he saw the effect of capitalism on humanity. He saw the hunger for material gain and the imbalances that such a consumer-led culture can cause in regards to our mental health and well-being. Maslow understood that human beings are both body and soul, and thus uh, we need to have a healthy balance of both to be happy. So in 1943, Maslow, the now famous Jewish American psychologist and academic, created Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is essentially a motivational theory in psychology comprising of a five-tier pyramid of human need. Maslow argues that needs lower down the pyramid, um, such as food, water, safety, um, must be satisfied before individuals can attend to the needs higher up. Uh, needs such as family, morality, love, belonging, self-esteem and creativity. Maslow's hierarchy is world famous. It is often referred to in psychology, uh, social science, behavioural studies and in business. And it works because it reveals the reality of the human condition, that we do have a finite body that needs to be maintained and kept safe, but also uh, that we have an infinite soul uh, that has desires and urges that also need to be fulfilled. And when we have a healthy balance of both in our lives, uh, we are happier for it. Focusing on one or the other too much can cause many complications for our own health and well-being and for our wider society. Now, Maslow came up with this concept in 1943, which is approximately 2,380 plus years after Nehemiah finished building the wall. The wall, of course, being the symbol of God's kingdom on earth, a symbol of God's principles of love and unity and equality and peace. Maslow came up with his concept of the hierarchy of human needs approximately 2,380 years plus after Nehemiah did in Nehemiah chapter 7 verse 1, which I will read for you now. Nehemiah chapter 7 verse 1, it reads, After the wall had been built and I had set the doors in place, the gatekeepers, the musicians and the Levites were appointed. Friends, in today's reading, the wall was finished. Hallelujah. But Nehemiah's work was not yet done. He knew that the wall would be utterly useless if God's people within it could not function as happy human beings. And Nehemiah knew that this could only be achieved if their needs were met. So in chapter 7 verse 1 we see that Nehemiah first employs gatekeepers. Now the gatekeepers were people who were responsible to man the walls and manage all those coming in and out of the city. The gatekeepers offered the people protection, 
from attack, from raiding armies and, of course, empires. And the gatekeepers also offered stable commerce by allowing food and drink and medicines and clothing into the city. So the gatekeepers provided the base layer of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the immediate bodily needs. We then read in Nehemiah chapter 7 verse 1 that Nehemiah then brought in musicians, people who can unite the people in one voice and lift them in worship up to God, offering the next layer of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, belonging, community and emotional expression. And then we read in Nehemiah chapter 7 verse 1 that Nehemiah appoints the Levites, uh, the priests, who came to fulfil the highest layer of Maslow's needs, of intellectual development, of creativity, of personal growth and self-esteem and accomplishment. All, of course, to be fulfilled and manifested through the community behind the wall, behind God's kingdom on earth. In Nehemiah's time, Jerusalem, Jeru Shalom, city of peace, and for us today, the church. Friends, modern science, modern philosophy, modern psychology has a long way to go before it catches up with the Bible. Nehemiah was thousands of years ahead of Maslow's genius and he applied such understanding as he rebuilt a functioning society of happy humans in Jerusalem. And friends, this is what church is all about. Church is the vehicle of human fulfilment that Christ loved to death. It offers safety, it offers protection, it offers family and community, it teaches morality, it encourages creativity and progression and growth. The church ticks every one of Maslow's boxes and it is the one place on earth where every human being can come and truly, and I mean truly, be themselves. It is the one place on earth where any human being can come in their brokenness and leave content, resting in the reality of God their maker. Friends, Abraham Maslow was a genius. But like all theories and models and philosophies and ideologies made by man, they are just that. At best, they are all good ideas that can help and guide us through life. But friends, Christianity is so much more, so, so much more, because Christianity is not simply a theory or philosophy. Rather, it is a reality that rests in truth, absolute truth. It rests in historical facts. Friends, there really was a Nehemiah and he really built a wall. There really is a Jewish nation who really birthed the Messiah, who really entered into the time and space that he had created and he really died for our very real sins and he really rose again. Jesus did this so that we can have a sure and steadfast hope and comfort that Maslow's rightly highlighted that we all need as human beings to survive and be happy and progress. The difference between Maslow's theory 
and others like it and Christianity is that Christianity does not exist in mere theory but it is realised in absolute historic fact and material truth in the very real and tangible and historical person Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus the Christ, the only one who can fulfil all of our material needs and spiritual needs that Maslow rightly defines in his hierarchy. The secret to being a happy human is not Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It is to know and follow Jesus Christ himself.